Do you ever crave a potato knish, the kind you'd eat at a New York deli? Well, lucky you, I'm gonna teach you how to make potato knishes New York deli style. An amazing homemade crust, delicious savory potato filling. Yum, yum, yum. Sally that girl in the kitchen. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Sally That Girl in the Kitchen. In today's episode, I'm gonna teach you how to make potato knishes New York deli style. Yes, these knishes are exactly what you would expect to pick up at a great deli. They have a really thin dough. They have that delicious savory potato filling. They are so great, perfect alone or with your favorite sandwich or with your favorite compliment, however you want. And of course, with a little spicy brown mustard, mm, that's the way I love them. And the best part is I'm gonna make these non-dairy so you can eat them with pretty much anything. But of course, if you prefer, you can make them with butter too. The sky's the limit, no restrictions here. But the best part is they are so good no matter how you make them. They're delicious, they're beautiful, very impressive. Anyone you make these for is gonna be over the moon. So I am super excited to teach you how to make these. So let's not wait another second and let's get started. For the dough part of today's recipe, you will need three cups of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of sugar, a half a cup of vegetable oil, a half a cup of water, one teaspoon of vinegar, one large egg, and one more separate that you'll be using for an egg wash. And for the filling part of today's recipe, you will need five tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, three small yellow onions, five small russet potatoes, one stick of parve margarine, or as I said earlier, if you want to go with butter, have at it. Two teaspoons of salt, plus some more that we're going to be adding to the water when we're boiling our potatoes, and a half a teaspoon of ground black pepper. You will also need some oven mitts, a baking tray, a cooling rack, a large spoon, some wet measuring cups, three glass bowls, one of them large, and it should have a cover, or of course you can use some plastic wrap instead. You're also gonna need a potato masher, a cutting board and a knife, a potato peeler, some dry measuring cups, some measuring spoons, a bowl, a long thin knife, a regular fork and spoon, and a large fork such as a serving fork, a rolling pin, some parchment paper, and also some wax paper. And you'll need either a teacup, such as the one I'm using, or something round with about a three and a half inch diameter. At this size, I'm gonna be getting about 17 potato knishes. But if you wanna go with a larger size, the size that you would find at a deli, then of course, just use a biscuit cutter or something with a larger diameter to cut out your circle. You'll also need a medium-sized pot and you'll need a medium-sized skillet, a colander, your favorite utensil for stirring your onions as they cook, and a pastry brush. So now that we have all of our ingredients and tools together, let's get started. So the first thing you're going to wanna to do is measure out your flour and add it to your large bowl. And I'm just gonna spread that out a little bit. Now, once I have that in, then I'm gonna measure out my baking powder and I'm just gonna pour that right on top of my all-purpose flour. And then I'm gonna go ahead and measure out my salt. And I'm gonna sprinkle that right on top. And then I'm gonna measure out my sugar and I'm gonna pour that right on top. So you'll notice we're just 
adding all of our dry ingredients into this bowl. Now, once I have them all in, I'm just gonna use my trusty fork. If you've watched me make doughs before, you know that for many doughs, I love to use my serving fork. I just learned how to do that from my mom and my grandma, and it just works, it works really well. So for this particular dough, I just love working with a large fork. And then I'm just going around and making sure that I'm incorporating that baking powder, that salt, that sugar, just want it well distributed amongst the flour. So now, once that is well combined, all I'm gonna do is grab another one of my bowls and I'm gonna crack an egg into it. I actually mentioned I'm using glass bowls, but you can use whatever type of bowls you like to make this dough. And then I'm just gonna grab my fork and I'm just gonna beat that egg well. So now right into this bowl where I've beaten my egg, I'm gonna continue to add some of my wet ingredients. So I measured out my oil and I'm gonna pour that in. It's vegetable oil that I'm using. And then I measured out my vinegar. This is white vinegar. I'm gonna add that in. And then finally, I'm gonna measure out my water. This is just room temperature water gonna add that in, then I'm gonna grab a spoon and I'm just gonna give it all a little stir. Of course, the ingredients are not gonna fully combine because we do have oil and water and it's not important for it to be completely emulsified. We're just going to give it a little bit of a stir. Then we're gonna grab our big bowl with our dry ingredients and we're just gonna pour these wet ingredients right on top. And then once we're sure we've gotten all of that in, then we're gonna switch back to our large fork, our serving fork, and then I'm just gonna use that fork to incorporate the ingredients. I wanna combine the wet and the dry, and I just use the fork and I kind of go in a circular motion. I go around the sides of the bowl, scraping off any dry flour and just bringing that flour in. Then I use the side of my fork to just kind of cut that dough as I'm working. And basically all I'm doing is incorporating all of that liquid into the dry flour and just making sure to bring it all together. Now, once most of it has come together, I just clean off my fork and I switch to my hands because of course, when you're working with dough, there's nothing quite like your hands. So I'm just going into that bowl and I'm using the dough itself to pick up any remnants, any dry flour that is trying to cling to the bowl, the dough is just going to pick it all right up. All you gotta do is press a little bit, hold on to that dough ball, and quickly you're gonna see that it just picks up all the remnants, all the little pieces that stayed behind, any dry flour from the bowl, it's just gonna go ahead and pick it all up. So now everything has been incorporated and the bowl looks pretty much clean. I've picked all of that flour up. So now I'm gonna switch to my counter. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to knead this dough for about five minutes. Five minutes is really all you need to bring this dough together. And what you're going to do is you're going to switch your hands. You're gonna do a little bit with both hands. You're gonna do a little with the right, a little with the left, because if you've ever kneaded dough before, it's a workout to the arms, so you just wanna make sure that you switch off between your arms so that, of course, you finish kneading this dough and it's absolutely beautiful and you take advantage of that time for a little arm workout. It's actually double purpose. So now I'm kneading my dough. It's becoming more elastic. It's just so beautiful. I love just the feel of this dough and I love working dough by hand. It's just fantastic. And really all it takes is five minutes of kneading and it's ready. Look at the inside of this dough, how beautiful and stretchy. It's just absolutely perfect. There's no clumps, no lumps. It's just absolutely divine and it just feels so amazing to work with. And it's gonna be the perfect vessel for that delicious filling that we're going to create. So I make this dough first because I can refrigerate it while I'm working on the filling because this dough is going to need to rest after we've worked it and it's the perfect amount of time while we create our filling to put this guy into the refrigerator. So I just grab my dough ball and I just stick it right back in the bowl where we first started working on it. Then I'm going to put my lid on and of course if I don't have a lid Plastic wrap would also work fine. We just wanna make sure it's nice and covered to keep it from drying out. And then we're gonna just pop this guy into the refrigerator. 
So now it's time to work on our filling. We're gonna peel and chop these potatoes after we wash them, of course. And then all I'm doing is cutting them into pieces to help them just cook quicker. And so I've added water to my medium pot and I'm just sprinkling in a nice amount of salt. I don't really measure it. I just kind of sprinkle in a nice amount to flavor these potatoes as they boil. And then I just push them right into the water, of course, using the back of the knife. You don't want to dull your knife. And then you're just going to turn your stove on to about medium to get this water boiling and to get those potatoes cooking. And then I'm just going to come in and give it all a little stir because I did put my salt in first and it kind of settled at the bottom. I just want to make sure it dissolves well into the water so that it could flavor the potatoes as they cook. So now the potatoes are in. I'm going to work on my onions. So I have three small yellow onions. They were smaller than usual, which is why I went with three. If they're medium or a little bit bigger than this, then you could probably go with two. And then all I'm going to do is peel them and I'm going to chop them into small pieces. And then I'm going to measure out my extra virgin olive oil and I'm going to add it to my medium skillet. Then I'm going to bring over those onions and I'm just going to push them right into my skillet. And then all I'm going to do is spread them out just a little. And then I'm going to turn on my heat. So for these onions, I'm looking to just sweat them. So I'm going to turn my heat on too low because I don't want to brown them or I don't really want them to caramelize. I just want to soften them up, sweat them and have them get infused with that delicious olive oil. It's going to be perfect. And so this whole process should take maybe 10 to 15 minutes, no more than that. You're going to see that the onions become more translucent. Oops, I lost a little piece there, went flying, <laughs> but my onions are almost ready. They're just becoming so much more flavorful. That heat and that olive oil really does magic on them. So while these are sweating, I'm going to go ahead and check on my potatoes because they've been in there for a bit and actually that heat's a little high. So I'm gonna bring it down a little to low because I think these guys may be almost ready. And actually, let me just see if they're fork tender because if they are, yeah, see they're coming apart pretty easily. These guys are ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to turn them off. These cooked for about 20, 25 minutes. It'll vary depending on your stove. So just make sure they're fork tender. You're gonna turn them off. You're gonna put your colander in your sink and then you're gonna bring that pot over and you're gonna very carefully drain out all the water from your potatoes. Then you just want to give your colander a little shake just to make sure you get rid of all that water. And then our potatoes are ready to go. So now I'm going to bring those over and I'm going to put them into a bowl because that's where I'm going to be preparing our delicious filling. So I just want to make sure to get all that yumminess into my bowl. And then now I'm gonna start seasoning this while my onions finish sweating. So I'm adding my salt, I'm adding my ground pepper, and then as I said earlier, I'm gonna be using parve margarine. This one is unsalted, but of course you can use butter. If you wanna make these dairy, then go ahead and use butter. The idea of using the non-dairy margarine is so that these can be consumed with any meal, but if you want to go ahead and make these dairy, have at it. They are delicious either way, and you're not going to be able to tell the difference when you eat this Kaddish. It's going to be so, so tasty, even though it is non-dairy. It's going to be delicious, trust me. So all I'm doing now is mashing that margarine in, and of course, combining that salt and pepper in with the potato. And then once that's in, I'm going back to check on my onions and just give them a little stir. And as you can see, they become more translucent. They're smelling amazing. It smells amazing in my kitchen. And these guys look pretty ready to me. They've been cooking for about 15 minutes or so. And as I said, every stove varies. So just keep an eye on them. And as soon as you feel that they're cooked, they've been sweating for long enough and they smell nice and fragrant, then you can just turn these guys off. So these guys look ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my stove off. And then of course, I'm going to incorporate these 
amazing onions into the filling for my potato knish. So I'm gonna bring them right over to that bowl where I mashed that potato with the margarine and mixed it in with the salt and pepper. And I'm gonna add these guys on top. And let me tell you, when you eat this potato knish, you're not gonna feel chunks of onion in the filling. As it bakes, it just all meshes together and incorporates. You don't even know there's onion in there, but the flavor is definitely present. It is so delicious and it gives it that classic New York deli style potato knish flavor. It is everything. Actually, I had one of my sons say to me, wow, I didn't even know there were onions in this knish when they saw me preparing this recipe. And the truth is, you don't even feel them, but believe me, they make such a difference when it comes to the flavor of this potato. So now all I'm doing is using my large spoon to mix these guys up. I just wanna make sure that I incorporate all of those yummy onions into my mixture and we are good to go. Here's a little sample for me. So now I'm just gonna replace this spoon with a regular tablespoon from my kitchen and then I'm gonna preheat my oven. So I wanna put my oven on 375 degrees, making sure I have a rack in the center and now I'm gonna pull my dough out of the fridge and my dough has rested and it's nice and cool. And look at how absolutely beautiful it is. It is just perfect. It's the perfect consistency. So now I'm gonna bring over some wax paper because I love rolling dough out between sheets of wax paper. I just find it makes the job much easier and it just comes out absolutely perfect. So I'm gonna grab that ball of dough and I'm gonna put it on one sheet of wax paper. And then of course, I'm gonna be covering it with another sheet of wax paper. But before I do so, I'm just gonna use my rolling pin to just kind of flatten this out a little bit. I'm just gonna to try to stretch this all the way to the edges of my wax paper so it doesn't really matter the shape it's probably going to end up being an oval it doesn't really matter the idea is to just stretch this out thin so now i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to cover it with another sheet of wax paper and then i'm going to use my rolling pin and just a little more pressure this time and i'm just going to press down as i go to just stretch that dough out a little bit and it really just helps me roll my dough out by just giving a little bit of force and just pressing my dough down. And then you'll see little by little, you just add a little bit of pressure and you're gonna roll that dough out and you're gonna roll it all the way until you have a nice big oval, nice and thin. So once you've gotten to this stage, then what you wanna do is you wanna peel off that top layer of wax paper. And then as I said earlier, I'm gonna be using this teacup it's just a nice diameter because I'm gonna be making small knishes. These are not by any means going to be large, but as I said, if you wanna cut your circles bigger because you wanna make less knishes, but you rather have large knishes, then go right ahead and do that. That's fine. You can use a biscuit cutter, a cookie cutter, or even a bowl if you wanna make larger knishes. A soup bowl would be perfect. Anything you use circular would be absolutely perfect. And then of course, you're just gonna take the edges off because this dough that we did not cut into circles, I am going to put that same dough between two pieces of wax paper and I'm also gonna roll this dough out. None of this dough is going to, to grab it. I'm gonna roughly make it into a flat disc. I'm gonna place it back onto the wax paper. I'm gonna grab another sheet of wax paper, put that on top, and I'm gonna roll out the rest of this dough and cut more circles. Now, once you cut out all of your circles, then you're gonna prepare your baking tray by lining it with some parchment paper, and then you're gonna bring over that delicious potato and onion filling that we have ready, and now it's time to fill our knishes. So I just grab one of my circles, and you're seeing I'm just using the hard part of my hand to just press the dough down. I'm stretching the dough out. So even though we rolled it thin and we cut it into about three and a half inches in diameter, we're actually stretching that circle out further because what we wanna do is fill our dough and then fold that dough 
over onto itself. So let me show you. All I'm using is my fingertips at this point and the hard part of my hands. I no longer need the rolling pin for this part. Then I'm grabbing my tablespoon and I'm gonna just put in a nice heaping amount of that delicious potato and onion filling right there in the center. And then I'm gonna show you what I do. All I do is I kind of bring it together and then I grab the dough and I just start stretching it over the filling, right on top, over the filling, just enveloping that delicious filling. Just push that potato in, bring that dough over, and then you are good to go. Then all you have to do now is just pinch this dough a little bit together to just kind of keep it together, and that's it. This dough is very easy to work with. It's very malleable. Some people actually like to bake their knishes like this face up. They just kind of press that dough in a little bit and leave it facing up. That's totally fine if you want to do it that way, but I like turning mine over because I love that beautiful, smooth, top. I just absolutely love how they look once they are baked this way. They're going to be gorgeous. So I placed it on my prepared tray and I'm just going to move on. I'm just going to grab another circle. I'm not even using my rolling pin at this point, just my fingertips and the hard part of my hand. Then I'm grabbing a nice heaping amount of filling for the center of this dough. Just a nice, nice amount that should do. Then just, I kind of bring it all together. And then once again, I'm gonna show you, actually I decided I need just a little more filling. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna show you what I do. I'm just gonna grab that dough and just bring it right over, just right on top of that delicious potato filling. And then just make my beautiful knish by just pulling the dough right over that potato filling. And then that's it. It doesn't even have to be perfect because this seam side is gonna face down and you're not even gonna see it. So you can crimp it and leave it face up. If you want to, just kind of push that dough in a little bit at the top, or you can do it as I'm doing. You just kind of pinch the dough together and just kind of bring it together in a little pinch in the center and then just flatten that pinch out just a touch. And then we're just gonna grab this guy, turn it over and place it with the seam side down on the pan like I like to do. So now, that's it. We're just gonna repeat that process over and over and I was able to make 17 small potato knishes. These are New York deli style, but I've gone with a smaller size. As I said, if you rather make this large, then of course you're not gonna get 17. Maybe you can get 10 large ones. And I think we did really great because look at how little we have left and that filling is so delicious. I'm gonna have it with my lunch. <laughs> so nothing goes to waste. So I've cracked an egg into a small bowl and I'm just beating that egg well with a fork because I'm gonna use that egg to give all of my knishes a really nice egg wash. I wanna make sure to not only get the top, I also wanna get the sides because this really creates a beautiful sheen and a beautiful color on these knishes once they bake. They're just gonna be so absolutely gorgeous. They're going to be irresistible. Look at how beautiful these guys look. They're just perfect. So now you pop them into the oven on a center rack and then you just set a timer for 30 minutes to allow these guys to bake. And my kitchen is smelling incredible. These guys are looking so beautiful and becoming so golden. And it smells so amazingly delicious in here. And after your 30 minutes are up, you're going to pull these guys out. And they are perfect. That dough is the perfect consistency. They're so gorgeous. And you see how that egg wash gave them a beautiful sheen and a golden color on top? They're absolutely perfect. And if you had a little pop here and there, that's okay. This is what they're supposed to look like. You're just gonna grab them off of your tray very carefully. I like to use two spoons for this because they're still hot. And the spoons will actually help you kind of push any of that little potato filling that may have popped out just a touch. And you just kind of push it right back onto the knish because none of that is going to waste. And then we're just gonna remove them one by one from our hot tray and we're gonna place them on our cooling rack to allow them to cool, but not too much, just a bit because I love a warm knish. Delish, delish, delish. 
I know, I just came up with that and I'm cracking myself up. I kind of like it. <laughs> I'm going to stick with it. Anyway, so I've removed them, placing them onto my cooling rack and look at how gorgeous these guys look. And I'm telling you, I wish you could smell them right about now because they smell so good. They look, smell, and I'm sure are going to taste just like a potato knish that you would pick up at a New York deli. They are just so perfect. And wait till you see what they look like on the inside because that dough is so perfectly thin and that filling is so delicious and it's definitely the star. They are so, so yummy and so tasty. This is a recipe you're gonna wanna make time and time again. You're going to get requests for this once they taste them because they are that good. And like I said, I made 17 because I wanted to make sure I had plenty to go around, but you can make some bigger ones and then you can share the way you would do at a New York deli. You can make them however you want, but what I do know is you're going to want to make them because these guys are crazy good. Okay, so enough admiring. They've cooled down just a bit and now it's time to put them on a beautiful platter for serving. And of course, now I'm gonna grab one for myself. Look at this guy. See how the bottom is nice and golden and it holds together and the top is beautiful and shiny. It's absolutely perfect. Nothing popped out of the bottom and all we did was pinch it together. And of course, it's not a knish without beautiful spicy brown mustard. That's the way I like to eat these guys. This one is my favorite mustard for all things deli. It's what I use on my pastrami sandwiches, on my corned beef, and of course, on this amazing knish. My mouth is literally watering <laughs> as I cut into this guy. Look at how beautiful that filling is. You see what I mean? You can't even see the onions, but believe me, the flavor is going to be crazy good. Ooh, a little bit of that spicy brown mustard. Wow. I cannot wait to try this. Just look at that delicious filling. Mmm, so crazy good. It's perfect. It is exactly what you would expect out of a New York deli potato knish. It's just perfect. That dough is just the perfect consistency, really thin, and that delicious potato filling. Wow, I'm smothering that spicy brown mustard on it because it is just so delicious. Mmm, so good. It really just transports me to a deli in New York. Yum, yum, yum. Mmm, <laughs> I can't get enough of this guy. It is so, so good. It's exactly what you would expect it to taste like. It's perfect. It's just such a yummy recipe. And you saw it wasn't hard to make at all. And believe me, the results are well worth the effort. Mmm, so good. It's got that perfect classic knish dough and that delicious potato knish filling. Yum. So how crazy good do these guys look? I don't know if you can tell, but I am so excited to have made this recipe because it's something I really wanted to teach you how to make, but also because I love them so much. And here in my house, they are going to fly. That's why I decided to make them small so that, you know, we have enough to go around because these guys are so crazy good and of course you can make them big if you want to you can do whatever you want the sky is the limit with this recipe and the best part is they're so crazy good <laughs> you are not gonna miss that visit to the deli you get yourself some good pastrami or corned beef make yourself a little sandwich you got your little knish with some mustard and you're good to go actually my eldest son loves to take these knishes slice them down the middle when they're cool stuff them with his favorite deli meat close them up and then warm them and eat it as a sandwich <laughs> i mean how crazy good does that sound he is a huge fan and i'm sure you are going to be too trust me no better yet don't trust me you're going to have to try to make this recipe yourself 
And of course, if you've enjoyed today's recipe, don't forget to like, comment, and share. Thank you so much for liking my videos, for writing a beautiful comment, for sharing them with your friends, and of course, for watching. I really appreciate you watching my videos, so thank you, thank you, thank you so much for doing that. And of course, if you're not already subscribed to Sally That Girl in the Kitchen on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and to touch that little notification bell so that you get notified every time I put up a new video recipe, which I do all of the time. I'm putting out at least one new recipe a week. And if you go over to that video tab on my channel and just explore under that tab, there are so many recipes already up because I've been doing this for a while. And there are tons of recipes there that I know you're gonna love. Plus I have playlists, so I have my recipes separated into different sections to make them easier to find. So anyway, you are going to love them all, so be sure to check those out. And of course, if you're not already following me on social media, don't forget to follow Sally That Girl in the Kitchen on Facebook, Instagram, and on Pinterest. And you can also follow me as Sally That Girl FL on Twitter, Snapchat, and on TikTok. Thank you so, so much for watching. And I'll see you next time. Sally that girl in the kitchen.